Welcome to Wrestling in Mom's Basement. This is going to be the Monday Night War review show for Nitro February 12th, 12th 1996. And then Nitro and Raw for February 19th, 1996. I, of course, am Patrick Young. This gentleman to my right is my co host, Joe Benuto. Uh, we'll kick off a Super Bowl 6 results just in case you did watch it. While I fix my hair. Because there's a lot of good matches on this show. To watch it, if you wanted to watch it. Sure. Well, I, as, as usual, I do watch, so this way we, we all know what we're going to get into. Uh, Nathan Boys defeat Paul Gammy in Street Fight. That was actually a good match. Johnny B. Babe beat Diamond Dallas Page for the Intelligent Championship. That was a good match. Lex Luger seemed to defeat Harm Heat or Silver Wrestle to retain the Tactic Titles. Cody defeat Wall Mate and to retain the U.S. Championship in a terrible match. The Tanks Racer defeat Brian Tillman I Respect You Shot Match. Terrible match. Lex Luger and Sting wrestled rewards and no contents. Terrible match. Very forward to defeat Randy Savage in a steel cage to win the WCW Championship. Very good match. Match and light. Okay. And Hulk Hogan defeat the Giant in a steel cage. Terrible match. They had two cage matches back to back. back. Yeah. What is this, TNA? Uh, Nitro 624, February 296. Comes to you from the Florida State Fair. <laughs> it's in the floor. Okay. Uh... I was in the past, we're doing Nitro first this time since the year on February 12th, uh, but we're all done. Yeah, so uh, Nitro automatically is the best show because it goes on the contestant. We don't know about that. Maybe the fact that rolled in here makes it the best show. <laughs> that would have to be an extraordinarily bad show. Uh, we're 24 hours removed from the Super Bowl pay-per-view that, like I said, was in mixed bag. Uh, they started a lot of time recounting pay-per-view for their own ring. Hugh Morris versus Randy Savage. Savage was fresh off not only losing the world title, but he also lost Balls Miss Elizabeth, who turned on in favor of Flair. They make a point to know that there isn't much flash from Savage tonight, despite his colorful gown. Yes. <laughs> Savage comes out aggressive, but falls victim to Mars' size. Savage still realizes a weak elbow for two. Mars, Hugh Mars' offense is really dull, surprisingly. Very unsurprisingly. And the crowd didn't buy him as a threat either, unsurprisingly. Uh, he finally wakes up the fans with a moonsault attempt. That one misses. Savage is a body slam and hits the dive elbow. That's not enough for him, though. Delivering a second for the win. Uh, yeah, I thought this match was at best just okay, but it wasn't really all that interesting. Uh, it, it especially was highlighted by uh, Macho Man's colorless bright yellow tights. Mm hmm. Yeah, uh, really standard stuff. Uh, Morris was very uninterested at the time. And I didn't get enough of the angry Savage vibe that they were going on about. No, he just felt the like third. normal Macho Man, actually. Randy Savage goes for the third, although after the bell by Hugh Sarge escapes, he then says he wants Ric Flair. Me and Gene kills time by interviewing the WCW race car driver. <laughs> no one cared. Yes. Up next, lock this. But Jimmy Hart versus Sky Riggs. Eric Bischoff has been talking Loch Ness, told him about Loch Ness for the entire show so far. He's pretty much just a really obese dude with nothing else to really interest him about. The, and he wears pajamas. Uh, this doesn't last long guys. Loch Ness no sells very to be some of an elbow. Uh, yeah, very, very, very boring. And uh, one of like the five moves they actually did, they ended up botching one horribly. So, not good. And barely less than a minute, Loch Ness looked one day. Yeah. Me, by God, genius, said to interview Ric Flair, and said, Elizabeth and woman wheel out a gurney. It is revealed, it is revealed that Flair is under the covers for some reason. He, come, he came out like hype as hell, playing over his title win and the ladies. Elizabeth told, told him to take a hand away from Randy and taking a belt was the final stroll. She just stumbled through this, by the way, but yeah. she wasn't really talking on my team here. Yeah, you can, you can forgive Miss Elizabeth for that. Uh, up next, Devin Storm versus Conan. Oh, who's Crowbar? Not Conan, Crow, Devin Storm. Yeah. Conan holds the OC United States Championship and the Mexican Highway title. Uh, I, I, what I was able to tell is you could tell how green Devin Storm was here. Because he was doing some cool spots. Or all race spots. Cool for this show. Uh, all race spots. <laughs> but he didn't know how to work the crowd with them. Like yeah. most of the crew was always still. Uh, Conan brings some, brings some big sauce out, including a plancha, and then he has a sick power bomb on the outside. He has another power bomb inside before moving submissions. Storm comes out with a springboard lady, Larry, his run attempt is blocked, and it turned to yet another power bomb 
for the one through three. Uh, for me, it was actually probably the best match of the night. Uh, yeah. Not, not, not a bad match, uh, obviously, but there were, but you can tell that uh, Crowbar, or the future Crowbar at this point, uh, was definitely not necessarily ready for the big time on Metro. Yeah, uh, they seem to try and cram a lot in a ton of spots, so they came off maybe more unfocused. Uh, it was cool, kind of an anticlimactic finish into the earlier power bombs. Yeah. It was more cool looking. I, I did appreciate the effort, though. And they made that on Anderson with Woman versus Hulk Hogan. Typical start from these two. Hogan knows a lot of Arn's offense. Bischoff has the nerve to call this the most important match of Arn's life. You know, I'm pretty sure they just did this match a few weeks back. Yes. They did, right? I believe so. They yeah. brought out Cyber Hogan, targets Arn's arm. Was this like Hogan continues to show that he was always a heel as he delivers back race and stuff? As soon as Arn starts to gain control, here comes our friend Elizabeth, spine buster on Arn, gets two Hulk up time. Instead of, and then with the late drop, he sees Flair and applies a figure four. Floyd runs in and Hogan pulls him into a cradle. Why? Uh, and takes the power in the eyes from woman and then Arn using Elizabeth's high heel to strike Hogan and steal it. Uh, yeah, the surprising thing is Arn wins. Yeah. Uh, he beats Hulk Hogan in 1996. I think that should, should be a feat on its own. Uh, the match itself was pretty much uninteresting. Like, you... Like you'd probably see that minus the finish out of house show to me. Yeah, like I said, like I said earlier in the recap match, it was basic stuff from uh, the two guys involved, but I was happy to see Arn win at least. Uh, He's staring at Chris Benoit versus Jushin uh, Thunder Liger. Uh, Stark in 95. 95. Which might be better than all these matches combined that I'm talking about. It probably is. Mongo shits on Savage Edward, saying that it's not... There's one thing I will do to this to Randy, but it's much worse for them to do it on Hulk. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Macho is pretty crazy. Like Hulk's that precious. Uh, Savage throws out the scare with Flair Arn while Mean Gene interviews them. Flair Arn go and take over commentary. <laughs> Hogan and Savage can't be over Hulk, so they go out and clear them off. Arn had channels Hogan to a rematch for some reason, <laughs> which Hogan accepts. Uh. Let's see. Um, that episode in the late show, so we can just get that out of the way. Jeez. Uh, I'll give it a four. I, I was actually going to be generous and give it a 4.5, but I, I, am actually, I actually think you're right. It's probably like a four. Yeah, uh, most of the episode is not very good. The next one's better, so there's that. Yeah. Uh, uh, but there were some decent points. Let me go back for the recap to find them. Uh, look, uh, look, I guess to close a few minutes, since we just talked about that, it delivered. You know, I think we've seen it more than enough times so that we have to, Ari. Right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, at least it delivered. Uh, Conehan and Devin played a lot of effort. You know, it wasn't anything special. Uh, but the first half of the show is pretty dire. <laughs> and Lockdown <Loch Ness> is awful. <laughs> so there's that. Uh, Roll. I need to take a little break from those. So if anybody don't mind, we're all in your well first in your house raising the cage, which I believe you've re well that's why we each both reviewed these shows. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've reviewed Super Bowl previously, and you did raising the cage. Yeah. Um. Razor Moon defeat one two three kid in a pretty good match. And probably a surprisingly decent match. Yes, yeah, because they're both horrible workers. Well, no, the gimmick. Oh, okay. Hard Horse Helsley beat Duke. The Duke Jersey in a okay match. Duke's going to be British Bulldog by disqualification in a match that wasn't too good. Shawlings beat Owen Hart in an excellent match in my match in late. And Bret Hart beat Diesel in a steel cage for 10 day championship in a pretty good match. Yeah. No one heard our best set together. But <laughs> enough, no, no one heard. Uh, I was actually looking at uh, interview videos for our, uh, our retro review coming up for. Uh, sold out and uh, I got one with Nash and where he actually said like what was his breaking point in WWF that he decided to go to WCW right and he actually said it was that pay per view because Brett didn't want to get pinned or get you hit know, with the finish Bruce Fisher did say that yeah oh. Brett didn't want to get hit with the finish and um, I think it was and Diesel yeah. and Undertaker got pissed at Brett where right. 
Undertaker actually stood up and said, it's not always fucking about uh, you. Yeah. You can't just give us the this little push before we go into Mania and start a feud. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, Diesel, like, right after that match, told went into the showers and told uh, Razor that, hey, tell Bischoff that I'm coming. Right. Uh, uh, just a little fun anecdote from this time period. Roll to place in the Society of Glorious in Society of Ohio. Um, things open with Sunny and Bikini. Tell us that viewer discretion is advised. Uh, Sunny alone is enough for me not to want to change the channel to Nitro. <laughs> well, yeah, this is 1996. Sunny, so yeah. Sunny, this is pre, you know, this is pre fake cancer and. 2019 Sunny did a little too bad. I mean, or late 2018. Yeah. Going to 2019 Sunny did a little too bad about a month ago. She's a, and yeah. not, definitely not a 10. Oh, oh, all of Sonya's life haven't had his, uh, caught up with her yet, so. No, not, definitely not like a 1,000, as she was in 96. But I would say maybe like a, for where she was, maybe, maybe not like a, a 7 now, Sonny. She looked pretty good at the yeah. icons at the 20 Arena. Yeah. She looked like she was a good spirit herself, so. She looked like she got some of her books back. Because her what she looked like a few, a few years yeah. ago, yeah. So yeah, she wasn't nervously like yeah. inhibited or inebriated or whatever. Yeah, even when I met her, yeah, I took the risk. Uh, even when I met her about two years ago, she was sick. She wasn't bad looking, but she was all made up and all that. She was sick. Yeah. If I didn't meet her before, I would pay this time. Uh, yeah. She looked a lot better. Uh, I would say like a seven out of ten now. But in but instead, I, I I met Funaki instead. Instead of Sunny, which to me. You, if you follow my tweets, yeah. every pay per view, I, I kind of had to be. Oh, you, oh, you were actually on the. You were thinking about it. Sony probably was one of my choices, yeah. Yeah, oh, she'll, be back, she'll be back around. She's not done nothing. Uh, it's also Sony person. Uh, <laughs> she'll be back around. Mm -hmm. She lives She lives right over the bridge. Yeah. I forget what part of Jersey, but she lives like closer to Philly and South Jersey. Yeah. yeah. Famous Cherry Hill, they said. Okay, she lives. I'll go visit oh, her. Really? I'm bored. I'll go visit her one day. Take the well, yeah, she. I believe one of her arrests actually happened in Pennsylvania. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I'll, I'll go over to Bridger Meter. I'll take the yeah. New Jersey trains one day. Uh, <laughs> give me your... Uh, but seriously, ju just put her on a small screen in the corner all night. And you'll win the ratings. Uh, yeah. well, uh, this, this is how I recap of the previous maybe which I did with a stare down between Diesel and Undertaker. WWE after Hall Championship goal is with Marlena versus Razor Ramon. Uh, at the Royal Rumble, Goldust took the account off from Razor, and I actually believe this is Razor's last match on Roll. Until hmm. Return of Scott Hall in 2002. Oh, wow. He attacks quickly, beat on Goldust before he can get the title of his Rumble. The champion takes a power and makes sure to feel up Marlene in the process. I want to touch a woman wearing an outfit as tight as Goldust is, but Laura says that Razor's man handling Goldust, but he might like it. Nice king. Razor goes on an incredibly obvious Razor edge on the ropes. Just so you can bench on the outside. I always hate that spot. Follow break goals case takes control. It, it always telegraphs what's gonna happen. Yeah. Because he gets too close to the ropes where he can't pick the guy up. Yeah. As payback for Razor Edge spot, Razor says Goldos out for for a slam. Unfortunately, Goldos and Marlene build to the back and count it out. Uh believe it or not, I think it might have been like Goldos. Like very first interesting match. I thought this was better than a rumble match. Yeah, I, I thought I actually thought it was pretty strong. They they seem to work well together on this night. Yeah. Uh, like Razor, like Razor, if he had already known that this is probably gonna be his last Raw match. Yeah. It, it's probably more like his nice little swan song, I guess. Uh, but yeah, I thought I, the, I thought this one was a little bit more. Uh, up tempo, as it were. Yeah, I, I, like I said, I think this is a nice match. I'm not sure, but I think it is. Uh, yeah, this is my match of the night on a uh, roll. Not my match of the week, but match of the night on a roll. Uh, there, there's like maybe like two old matches on Nitro. I like the little better, but this one is close. Yeah, it's probably a the old match up until the finish, but uh, they weren't that good pace for me. I just pulled out and I was enjoying it. Unlike Lux Luger, Razor Moon says, well, Razor Wazzy doesn't celebrate a count of victory. <laughs> Too hard. Yeah. He gets on my friends says he doesn't want Colson's belt. He wants his A's instead. Well, I guess Razor's cool with the game now. Razor tells Ryan Piper to make the match anywhere, anytime. 
He throws weird shots at Piper too for some reason. And mentions that goal of 66. Doc Hendricks gives us a lengthy recap of the emails. He does say to Vader Nelson that Diesel will go on with Undertaker at WrestleMania 12. While this goes on, Vader and Jim Cornette make their way to the ring. Vader immediately assaults Alda Montoya and Barry Horace, who are apparently set to face by Donis. Thank you, Vader. He Seriously, thank you, Vader. He shows names to shit Alda Montoya, Vince types Vader versus. Unless we'd have gotten seen Sunny then. Who I don't think was with the Bidons at the time, right? Yeah, I don't think so. So Vince types Vader versus Jeff Zuna at WrestleMania until he finishes his kick in his. Uh, I'll hype video ears to promote the ultimate order. Can you say desperate for ratings at this point? It was like an elongated one, too. Yeah. Like, I was just waiting for, like, okay, okay, so it's gonna end soon. Right, And yeah. then it just went off for, like, another, like, whole vignette. Like, ah. Uh, continue with desperate ratings, boys. <laughs> Sully was back, and I barely there, buddy, I guess. Say a happy birthday, Mr. President. Why? <laughs> I don't know. Might have been prices then, I'm not sure. February 19th, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. But still, why? I don't know. Not complaining, just... Just, that's what rings, boy. Yeah. I've seen more logical things happen, so... <laughs> On Nitro versus Raw, so... Uh, Mar Janae versus the Ringmaster with Teddy Biasi. According to Vince, Janae will have a new partner form the new Rockers, and they will be part of a tournament to crown new tag team champions. The Soviet Guns had to vacate the belt due to the injury of Billy Dunn. Vince says that the Ringmaster is a stone-cold person. Hmm. Both had an early roll for near full, falls, so Austin just jumped, dumps him outside. Once back inside, J Janae shirts from a 1980s dropkick for two. Uh, stun gun by Austin says it's a commercial. They really hammer home the ringmaster stuff as he works at SCF. And now Koji clutch like submission. More mm -hmm. irritated, I of his 80s high flying stuff. Austin is tired, Janae puts it down to Billy Dodger. Uh, it, it's actually strange how quiet the crowd was for a Steve Austin match. Yeah. Uh, give it about another year and that place would probably be going absolutely insane. Yeah. Uh, this one, this match, uh, minus no reaction, I, I thought it was okay. Uh, Austin pretty much got all of his, uh, technical ringmaster stuff in. Yeah. And, uh, Denny actually didn't really do much. No. Nah. It was pretty much all, mostly Austin, but... I guess it was a decent enough showcase for him. Yeah, it was another fine little match. Another special, but they did what they needed to. It got Austin win over an established veteran. Yeah. Mankind speaks for what I believe is the first time. In the promos. No, he spoke to me once. Mankind speaks for what I believe is the third time in the promos. But this time you actually... He's holding... It's you get a little bit more clear, clear picture of him, where he's just sitting in the corner. Yeah, this is the rat one. And you know what? Fun fact. That rat is, is actually Jim, Jim Cornette's. Cornette. Uh, he's holding a rat, and the promo will be used as part of his theme music, too. An all fun fact. Yeah. On, uh, WWF The Music Volume 2, I believe. That, that is his entrance theme. Right. Uh, he had an outro theme, too. Yeah, uh, it's really good that she tells about God creating him on the eighth day, and his lack of teeth, and messed up ear. <laughs> uh, he must have had a bad day, yeah. Yeah, uh, next week, Yokozuna faces British Bulldog and Owen Hart in a handicap match. Four years ago, or two years ago, been a lot better. Uh, and Jake Roberts versus Isaac Yankton. It, a year later for Isaac, and like four years later for Jake, very good match. <laughs> and we'll hear from Shawn Michaels. Uh, Tatanka, what Teddy be awesome? Shawn, no, Shawn and Brett will have their first stare down. Oh, that's it. Going into Mania. <laughs> Tatanka with Teddy be awesome versus The Undertaker with Paul Bearer. Oh, fuck. Who lets him talk about Harl? Uh, Vince, by the way, all night oversold the, the whole, let's quote it, wherever The Undertaker is, Diesel's sure to follow him all night long. He was really overhyping that. Uh, they do some really basic stuff that includes the talk of him and some other drama. forgot to call him Native American to talk Once he does, Diesel shows up with an axe in his hand. He grabs a camera and heads to the back with him. And her break to talk is working in Chinlock. On a Swiss screen, we see Diesel destroy Undertaker's casket with an axe. Lord calls the casket Undertaker's home like he's a vampire or something. Undertaker beats the toggle and two said no mic gives a damn. Undertaker beats the toggle and two two said no mic gives a damn. Pat Mike said that a little too literally. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, that was actually probably the perfect response. I wasn't even uh, I was only like half paid attention, like trying to remember uh, in my head what happened in the match. Uh but yeah, the the match wasn't really 
anything. Yeah, I'm not really going to talk about this one. It wasn't about the mash. Uh, this is about the angle, so, but the angle worked in that sense, so. Good job on the angle. Yeah. Maybe the best sport you're going towards me. Uh, Undertaker sees the replay of what happened, heads to the back, and the uh, she billionaire test self continues for some Th reason. This time with a Larry <laughs> King impersonator. Yeah, it has Larry Flynn live as well. It it's horrible. Uh, Nitro, I'm just 25. When was that goddamn billionaire Ted stuff ending? Didn't this already say it was ending? Yeah, uh, I, th I think they said the, that they technically played it as billionaire Ted's war room ended. Ah, gotcha. But now they're still going to make fun of them. And they even advertised next week that it's going to be the Huckster and the Nacho Man. Oh, good. Uh, is that the old the retirement home one? Pro Probably, yeah. Uh, Nitro 25, uh, from 1996, from Wickamico Civic Center in Salisbury, Maryland. I'm not making it out. Okay. <laughs> That's what it says, sorry. Yeah. Salisbury, Maryland. Wickamico. Sounds like a place in the Poconos. <laughs> in Pennsylvania. Yeah. All I understand with Woman versus Hulk Hogan is the rematch from last week. Soul shots into the WWF from this shelf. Gore Hogan's interest about them lying. This starts almost identical last week, except for the fact that Hogan's willing to cheat a bit more. Since that's how R&B last week. He bites R and rakes his eyes several times. While Hogan continues to cheat, Mitchell says that they are the most washed wrestlers show in the world, and it's quote, not even close. The actual numbers to differ at, at, at the moment. <laughs> Hogan has the wrestling... My way. Well, I guess it, it's better that you declare victory. and I guess so. And if, and if no one actually goes and bothers looks at the ratings, then I guess your word's just as good. Hogan has, by the way, Hogan's represented WrestleMania 9 eye patch here. Eye bandage, I mean, he has that working. He's just dominating. Big Boot connects, I like last week, does a fair four. The Taskmaster runs out, but is so slow <laughs> that Randy Savage <laughs> beats him to the ring and levels him. And for some reason, that's a disqualification. Winner Arn Anderson somehow. Yes. Uh, Arn Anderson wins again. Uh, and I should just go back to my comment. Es especially with uh, Perception being that WWF is also doing the billionaire Ted stuff where they're constantly trying to slander them and bring them down and yeah. saying that they're using on our own competitive business practices and all that stuff. And, D and WCW is just straight up saying, like, we're the best and it's not even close. It kind of leads to that credibility. Yeah. It's all. It's almost like Vince is unintentionally raising WCW up. Right. Uh, up higher than he is. Uh, but back to the match. It, it, it's kind of almost a similar match we had last week between Anderson and Hogan. Uh, not not anything of interest. Okay, I'm actually the opposite. I feel like it's a piss poor version of the previous match. Because yeah. I, I thought there was too much Hogan dirty brawling and a uh, horseshit finish too. Just really made it worse. Um, next, Alex Wright versus Lock next with Jimmy Hart. It's the first time I'm going to say this. Poor Alex Wright. Uh, Alex Wright was how, like, to the, for some reason. And ironically, he is on on our screen right now. Uh, Alex Wright wrestled with a big ass elbow pad on too that just looked very weird on him. I don't know why. I'm, he doesn't normally wear elbow pads. Yeah. That just looked weird. He tried to roll away from Loch Ness a few times and does a good job of dodging him. Loch Ness starts right off his back and is already winded, so he gets to be wrong. Loch Ness ends it with an elbow, and I think he shot the hook. Uh, yeah, I forgot to add this into the previous nature review. Uh, I believe no Loch Ness is a giant ace that uh, a British wrestler. Okay. Uh, but yeah, it, it wasn't a good splash on his end. Uh, He's blown up within a couple minutes. The match lasted two minutes and twenty one seconds. Which if I'm doing my map Lack Ness lasted about thirty seconds. Which if I'm doing my map correctly, that is about hundred and forty one seconds. He was blown up for about hundred and thirty of them. Uh yeah. <laughs> up next, Belfast Bruiser versus Brian Armstrong. The Belfast Bruiser fit fit leave for yeah. anyone aware. Commentary says that he's here for Lord San Regal due to be from way back in the day. So I guess this is Philly's first match in WCW. Yeah. Armstrong is some USA chance in the early goings. Bruiser works Armstrong's shoulder over and takes him down a short block. 
Uh, Armstrong's kind of incredibly generic. I'm not sure if you got that vibe from. Yeah, he is. From like Slammer Ray. Really. I know his match is okay against Steve Malenko, but like, yeah. Uh, he comes back using the power of America and applies a headlock. Bruiser gets free and bruising. Bruiser gets free and is bruising Brian. He gets beat up Armstrong, twists it around. It was actually pretty entertaining when Philly was on offense. Armstrong gets a boot off that hits a face off to fall by back suplex. He makes a mistake and runs into a tilt world slam that ends it. Uh, sure, you left the. The match wasn't really much. Uh, it it was kind of fun, so it actually may have been my match of the week. Funny okay. enough. Uh, my match of the week was the main event. Okay. Because those two don't do wrong. Yeah. True. Uh, but, I, but I thought it was just an interesting little match. Uh, it, it, yeah, it did have its faults. Maybe, though, maybe one worker wasn't as strong as the other one or as interesting, but I thought overall it was a solid. Outing. It was the other match I was talking about that four match in a week. Uh, it was pretty fun though. Uh, Belfast Bruiser is a stupid name though. Yeah. Uh, uh, Philly did well in his Nitro debut though. That should uh, be like a side moniker. Yeah. Uh, Philly did well in his debut though. And mm -hmm. I think it went a bit long though for what they were trying to accomplish because it went like six minutes for Philly, but yeah. Uh, then we started World Tag Championship. Murph Flair with Miss Elizabeth Woman versus Randy Savage. I will get my sure this on this episode. They were just flying through the matches. Yeah. So I did like that. Not on the Mean Gene bullshit. Not for Mean Gene. But on the random, the same Mean Gene interviews over and over. Yeah. Uh, we normally get a ton usually. Uh, surprisingly, Savage is as angry as he should be. Uh, Conte hyped him up as unstable and pissed this time. But he wasn't that aggressive. Flair's on the office quickly. He wasn't more aggressive than what Macho Man would be. Yeah. Flair is uh, on the office quickly. ends up sending over to Gabriel. Savage rallies and scares the ladies to the back. Open the door for four elbow him. Woman returns to race and eyes. They trade chops and punches. In the corner until Savage wins out. Savage locks one in the figure four because all the baby faces are still finished, you know. Four gets up by ends up in a sleeper, only to end up in a sleeper though he counts with a back suplex. Stolen suplex by Flair leads to a oh god. <laughs> From the chain. <laughs> Well, he shouts, oh god. Oh god. Flair <laughs> locks in the right floor where Savage slips out. Savage has to lay in the right hands and goes for the baby face 10 punches. Woman throws his shield in, but Savage, like a defensive football player, intercepted. I forgot what position I was going to raise. Savage said, uh, <laughs> cornerback, there you go. That's defense, right? Yes. There you go. He hits Flair and covers. Kevin Sullivan's out, and Woman uses her own shabbat. By the referee, who's apparently blind. Hogan runs in to be up Sullivan while Arn Anderson shows up in DT Savage, allowing Flair to retain. Uh, yeah, I, I did think this was a pretty pretty strong match and a good way to end off the show. Uh, however, it, it is the almost the same thing they did last week. Mm. Uh, just with two different people. Uh, for me, it was going really well down until the interference in the end. Uh, I did that helps keep Savage strong, but it gets repetitive at that point. Solve something for you, though. Uh, the heels beat up Hogan and Savage until Bruce Beefcake shows up as the booty man. The crowd's so confused, and commentary acts like nobody knows who this guy is. Sort of like he wasn't the dumbass Zodiac in recent months. Uh, Bruce is the epitome of the guys getting pushed because they're close to Hogan or the mold. Yeah. Uh, booty man chases the heels to the back, then the faces go to commentary where Hogan introduces the booty man and they hype a six man tag for next week. And for roll, I will give it a five point five. Uh, I probably would give it a. I probably would give it a five. Yeah, I thought it was decent enough on a roll. Uh, the two matches that mattered were all right. The first two. Yeah. Uh, while the main event delivered a big angle hand to me. Uh, but for me to billionaire, t keep on ending the show and billionaire test stuff, it's going to bring down the overall score. Oh, yeah. For me, until they go away for good, so. That hopefully happens soon. Uh, Nitro had the opposite. The ending, the two, the two main event, the two main, two last matches were better, so I guess they ended on a higher note. <laughs> yeah. Both shows were really close again. <laughs> I'll give it to Nitro, though, just because I liked it. There were two matches better than rolls, too. So I'll give Nitro six. I was going to give it like a 5.5. Yeah, so I'll, I'll give it to Nitro to just... So it's about the same score, it's just a little lower. Yeah. Yeah, it was a most good episode Nitro this week. Uh, 
They cut all the extra Mean Gene stuff outside the beginning of the end. They didn't repeat the same few acts. Uh, the Loch Ness stuff and the Hogan and Anderson match sucked out. Every answer that was enjoyable despite the awkward baby and the booty man gimmick. Uh, the episode did fly by because they kept them actually going. Uh, yeah, I'll get. Uh, but actually, the fans disagreed with us. The girls' rating for that week was a 3.1. Uh -huh. And Nitro's was a 2.9. Hmm. I guess so now I'm really blowing them out. Because <laughs> roll on that one. Uh, the week before, one was on my Salta. Nitro actually scored a pretty solid 3.7 on its own. Uh, I'll next. Well, usually when Raw's pre or Munch's preempted, the other one gets like a 25% boost, I must say. Uh, I'll next. Uh, we continue our, our dose. We're continuing our WCW rampage. Uh, I yep. sold out 1997. Yep. See you then. See you then.